Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to draw a titration curve. And I was going to draw the titration curve for the amino acid cysteine, which I drew over here. So this is cysteine. Okay, and I drew the PKs in red. The carboxyl group has a PK of 2.0, the alpha amino group has a PK of 9.5. And the thiol group, which is part of its R group, has a pK of 8.2. Okay, so I already pre-drew a graph for you guys, and I made a stepwise order of how you should go about drawing your, uh, drawing your titration curves for this class. But the idea here is anytime you're given a graph, you're supposed to draw a graph, or this is just bigger advice than this class in general, Anytime you're given a graph, you should always look at your axes, and if you don't have axes, you should label your axes, okay? So I gave you the axes of pH versus equivalence of NaOH or OH minus, but uh, you can easily be asked uh, pOH versus equivalence of OH minus or pOH versus equivalence of HCl. So there's four different ways you can ask the question, but I wanted to get you guys to always look at the axes, okay? And you can see over here, I wrote this idea of same goes down, right? So the idea here, when you're looking at the axes, and I gave it to you in this case, but it depends on the, the, the situation, okay? And I didn't look this out. But the situation here, so there's four different ways she can ask you, pH versus equivalence of NaOH, pH versus equivalence of H+, plus, pOH versus equivalence of H+, plus, and pOH versus equivalence of OH-, minus. okay? The way I like to think of it is that whenever your y, look at how when your y, so whenever the pH, the y-axis, the pH is the same as the x-axis, the H plus or pOH versus OH minus, when those two axes are the same, notice how the curve goes diagonally down in both of these scenarios. So, and then whenever it's the opposite, where it's pH versus equivalence of OH minus or OH versus H plus, it'll go up in both of these scenarios, okay? So I want you guys to remember that anytime the axes are going down, the idea here is same goes down. So whenever they're the same, it's going to go diagonally down, okay? Except your grades, those will go up if you remember this tip, okay? Um, and the reason why this works the way it does, because I, I don't want you guys just memorizing it. I want you to understand why, the, why this works the way it does, okay? So notice how whenever I am at, so in this case, the x-axis, when we're moving to the right, it means I'm adding more H plus ions into my solution. If I'm adding more H plus ions into my solution, remember the pH equals to the negative log of H3O plus or H plus, they're the same thing. One's just shorthand for another. So whenever I'm increasing the amount of H plus, the pH is decreasing, okay? So the, the idea here, is that I'm going to decrease the pH in the case where I'm going down, but, and then similarly for this top graph over here, this one right over here, okay? For this one, what I'm doing is I'm adding OH minus, which from another video, you know that's going to decrease the amount of H plus in your solution. So if I'm decreasing the amount of H plus, I'm going to increase the pH, and that's why the pH goes up. The same thing happens for these other two graphs shown on the right. But the big takeaway that I want you guys to take away from this is whenever your axes are the same, when it's like pH versus H plus or pOH versus OH minus, the same goes down. You're always going to make your curve shift diagonally down. Now, an additional thing I'm going to add for this scenario is that whenever your y-axis is pOH, it's asking you to use pOH, you're going to have to have one additional step, which is convert your, your pKa values. You're going to have to convert pKa to pkb okay so don't forget to convert your pk to pkb and the way that you're going to do this is that your pka plus pkb is equal to 14 so the another way of saying this is pkb is equal to 14 minus pka okay so that's how you're going to get the pkb values and you're going to plot them the exact same way um as if you were doing PKs. The only thing you're going to do differently for POH is you're going to use PKBs. Okay, so we got that first idea down. Step one is done. We label our axes. In this case, because our axes are pH versus equivalence of OH, they're not the same, so we're going to go diagonally upwards. And again, this is because we're increasing or we're decreasing the amount of freely flowing H3O plus ions, so we're increasing 
the pH, okay, as we add more base. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to determine equivalence. I have another video talking about what equivalents are conceptually, so I'm not going to get into that in this video. But the idea here is that if you had three pKa's, you're going to need three equivalents to deprotonate that amino acid fully because an equivalent is just an, equi an equal amount. So you're going to need three times the amount to fully go from protonated to fully deprotonated. So in this case, because I have three pKa's, I'm going to use three equivalents. I've had in another example, I have three. So we're going to use one, two, and three. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the pKa's at your half equivalence points. Okay. So my pK values, if I go back over here, they're going to be 2.0, 8.2, and 9.5. And you might ask, well, how do I know I'm supposed to plot which one first? Well, remember how we're trying to go horizontal. Remember how because our axes are the opposite, so we have to go diagonally upwards. Okay, so that means that I'm gonna have to plot my lowest pK first, and I'm gonna work my way upwards so that I can have that diagonal shifting upwards curve. So I'm gonna go to my first half equivalence point, and I'm going to plot my first half pK. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the first half equivalence point. And I'm going to plot my first pK of 2.0. Then I'm going to go to my next half equivalence point. I'm going to plot the next one of 8.2. And then the next one at 9.5. Okay, so that's step number three. Then we're going to, for step four, we're going to make our curve horizontal at the half equivalence point and vertical at the full equivalence point. I'm going to make it horizontal here, vertical here. I know in real life it's a little bit more slanted, but because we want you guys to understand what's happening, at the half equivalence versus full equivalence, we're trying to emphasize the idea, which let me first connect these points. We're trying to emphasize the idea that at the half equivalence point, where your pH equals to your pKa, that means that it is a good buffer. And notice how this axis is showing me I'm adding NaOH. So as I'm adding NaOH in this buffering region, notice how the pH stays relatively the same. But then as soon as I get out of my buffering region and I get into my equivalence point, or my equivalence region, my pH is gonna drastically change whenever I add my strong base in this case. So again, the whole point of buffers are to resist changes in pH and they're doing that exactly where they're supposed to be good buffers at the half equivalence point, okay? So that's why we make it horizontal at the half equivalence point and then we make it vertical at the full equivalence. And then the last step, which you should, please don't forget is you're gonna add your buffering brackets. And remember we said that a one to 10 or 10 to one ratio is a good buffer and that comes from our henderson hasselbalch equation. The idea here is that we're going to have to make it plus or minus one of our pKa. So all we're going to do is we're going to take those pKa values and we're going to go plus or minus one of those pKa values. So in this case, our first pKa is 2.0, so our buffer brackets are 1 to 3. Then the next one is 7.2 to 9.2. And then the last one is 8.5 to 10.5. Okay. So the idea here, again, to resummarize everything, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna label your axes and the trick is same goes down, okay? In this case, our axes were the opposite, so we're gonna go diagonally upwards. Then we're gonna determine equivalence. In this case, because we had three pKa values, we're gonna use three equivalents. It always, it always depends on which amino acid you're using. Then you're gonna plot your pKa's at your half equivalent marks. So in this case, our pKa's were 2.0, 8.2, and 9.5. So we're going to start labeling them from the lowest one going up to the highest one because, again, we want our curve to go diagonally upwards. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make our curve horizontal at the half equivalence point. And again, this is because it's a good buffer at the half equivalence point. So the pH is not going to really change around that area. And then we're going to make it vertical at the full equivalence points because, again, it's not a good buffer at those regions. Okay. Now, last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our buffer brackets, and it's going to be plus or minus one of the pKa's. And this comes exact, and this idea comes from our Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So if you plug into there, you're going to see that to get a one to ten or ten to one ratio, it's plus or minus one of the pKa. I'll make another video after this explaining conceptually how the titration curve ver works versus the species you're going to see in solution. And I think this will help explain a little bit more in de detail this fourth idea here, where why your curve is horizontal at the half equivalent and vertical at the full equivalent.